So this case is a fairly typical case of a patient with pancreatic cancer, 66 years old. Um, she presents actually with jaundice and some abdominal discomfort. She gets worked up and found to have on CT a pancreas mass. Um, and the mass is big enough that it's now pinched her bile duct. And so she un she's jaundiced and her labs show that and her cancer marker is elevated. And so she goes to GI and she has an upper endoscopy and an ERCP, a stent is placed and brushings are taken. And at that point, diagnosed with uh, pancreatic cancer. Now, typical imaging is done, um, usually CT and endoscopic ultrasound is standard. And she's found that maybe, just maybe, she might be surgically resectable. And so she heads off to the operating room. And just uh, at the findings at surgery, unfortunately, were that she had metastatic disease to her liver at that point. And so the surgeon appropriately opts to not do an operation, sews her back up, and sends her to the medical oncologist shows up a few weeks later and about a month later initiates treatment uh, with systemic chemotherapy. And the choice that was made was uh, nabpaclitaxel, abraxane, and gemcitabine combination, a two-drug combination. That gets initiated. She tolerates it pretty well, has some mild nausea, which is pretty easy to control, has some fatigue typical of the cancer and the chemotherapy. Um, but also has a little bit of neutropenia, uh, which is managed through our usual routes, uh, sometimes using growth factor uh, support. Tolerates it pretty well in general, undergoes repeat scanning a month or so later, and actually has a really nice response. Liver lesions are no longer visible, and the pancreas mass remains fairly stable. Continues on treatment for a little while longer, and eventually um, develops a complication of some diabetes, um, gets admitted to the hospital for that. Not an uncommon problem that we see when we're beating on people's pancreases and chemotherapy and all of that, for them to get uh, some diabetes, lose glucose control. So in that evaluation, she's also found to have some progression of disease. And so new liver lesions, new onset diabetes, um, it's time to change therapy. And nowadays, of course, we have a variety of choices in second line therapy. But because this woman's age, she's under the age of 70, good performance status still, uh, the doc decides to give her sort of full Monte chemotherapy, uh, full Firinox, the combination regimen of full Firinox in the second line setting. And she's off on that treatment now. So this is a fairly typical patient presenting with pancreatic cancer. She's already got symptoms, jaundice and some, uh, probably some pain and doesn't feel right. And um, as we know, this cancer almost in everybody uh, brings them down a t rung or two on the performance status tier and this patient is no different. Also being 66, it's important to recognize that uh, fairly aggressive chemotherapy such as Fulfirinox may not be all that well tolerated and difficult to get into her. Um, and so uh, I put those pieces of the puzzle together um, and say this is a good case for Gemnab Paclitaxel, frontline therapy. You want to ask some other deeper dive questions too about a patient, you know, uh, lives alone or not? Um, how much support does the patient have? Um, really, how well are they? What are the other comorbidities? All of that factors into a decision as to how one picks what you're going to use in frontline therapy. Pancreas cancer is terrible. Um, so uh, the problem with this disease is it has a very short timeline in terms of overall survival. Um, we are doing better. Um, I would, you know, if a patient really asked and wanted me to pin, them, pin this down, it's under a year is typical survival. There are a few patients which make it longer than a year with metastatic pancreas cancer. And that's really coming on the backs of successful first and now second line chemotherapy. So her overall prognosis is not good. Um, there are a few lucky folks that, are that we call the tail on the curve, but there's some on the other end that really never respond to treatment and don't do well at all.